from Pikachu to a 400 million year old fish to even monsters. Did you know that Pokemon even exist in real life? I'll show you 32 of them that were seen in our real world. And before I tell you how they caught me in real life, I gotta tell you a more shocking discovery. I'm talking about Relicanth, who was fished out of the real world almost a billion years after it apparently went extinct. Damn, this Pokemon really put the relic in Relicanth. It was discovered during deep sea exploration, a Pokemon whose appearance hasn't changed in 100 million years. No way this could be caught in real life, right? Wrong. In 1938, a museum curator, Marjorie Courtenay Latimer, discovered the first Colicanth specimen among the catch of Captain Hendrik Goosen off the east coast of South Africa, off the Chalumna River. Before this discovery, Colicanths were thought to have become extinct around 66 million years ago, just like the Relicanth. Damn, is the Earth that old? It was just like discovering a dinosaur that survived the meteor strike. And discovering Stunfisk in real life was equally as epic as that. Stunfisk is this cute Pokemon that exhibits a unique regional variation. In the Galar region, it takes on a ground steel type, which is distinct from its standard ground electric status in most regions. Too bad it isn't this cute in real life. Just like Stunfisk, the northern stargazer fish has their eyes on top of their head, allowing them to always look up. Stunfisk and stargazer also share the same height and weight, even though this stargazer looks creepier. Now, we gotta talk about that time I got caught in 4K. It was just a regular day in Melbourne, Australia, when this cute brushed out possum with a bright yellow coat walked into the Borania Veterinary Clinic. It was really shocking because brush tail possums were not supposed to be golden. You see, this wasn't just any regular brush tail possum. It was a mutant. Luckily, I was rescued and sent to a secret wildlife sanctuary where I can live a long, happy life. Full disclosure, it wasn't really me. Anyway, this Pokemon looks a lot like a sea slug. Just like Relicanth, Shellos was found under the sea in the form of a similarly bizarre animal. I'm talking about a brightly colored and patterned sea slug called Lokes Cremotorus. Just look at them. Isn't the resemblance uncanny? Man, these Pokemon seem pretty hard to find. Except this next one. You can find it even in your room if you don't act right. Last time I saw this particular Pokemon was yesterday in the morning when I had to take out the trash for Ash. I'm talking about Trubbish. He was literally a walking trash bag. <laughs> Unlike Trubbish, Wooper is not a trash bag. It's more of an endangered species. The Padamorphic Salamander, Axolotl. Compared to the rest of its body, Wooper's head is quite large and branch-like gills protrude from it. Wooper is basically an axolotl without arms, which also has external gills. Axolotls can only be found in specific lakes in the Valley of Mexico, and they are far more aquatic than other salamander species. Wooper may not be that intelligent, but it always seems to have a smile on its face, much like the axolotl. The water has not been the only place that real-life Pokemon have been found. The legendary bird Articuno has been found in the sky. Yup, and it was caught in the form of a black-throated magpie jay, a long-tailed bird that is native to northern Mexico and has feathers on its head that closely resemble Articuno. Fortunately, the magpie jay is much more common than the legendary Articuno. Articuno's galarian form is harder to pin down as it draws inspiration from a mask worn at a masquerade ball. Who knew this could be a Pokemon? Who also knew this could be a Pokemon? Whatever this is. Hold on a sec. Let me check what this is. Got it. A Glard Sea Dragon, a species of marine fish that was found off the coast of Australia. Just take a look at this sea dragon. You can't tell me this isn't the spitting image of Dragalge. Like this real life creature, Dragalge has camouflage abilities using aquatic plants as a disguise for protection. And unlike Dragalge, which sprays an impressive corrosive poison, sea dragons are entirely harmless. Know what else is harmless? The Pokemon Corsola in its real life version, the brightly colored and branched pink red precious coral. However, it's important to note that while Corsola has its own distinct smiling face, the precious coral are not singular individual organisms. Instead, what appears as a single coral is actually a colony composed of genetically identical individual coral polyps. Damn, these Pokemon just hide in anything, huh? Just like Gorbis disguises in the real world as a long-nosed chimera. Yes, a long-nosed chimera is this fish. This family of cartilaginous fish can be found in the temperate and tropical seas worldwide. They are also sometimes known as spook fish, which seems appropriate given their quite ghostly appearance and their dark deep sea habitat. This video is about to get even more interesting because tell me why there's a Pokemon in our world hiding as a flower that literally smells like a dead body. You heard me right. Vile 
problem is a combination of bile and bloom. So if you find the stinking corpse lily, then you have caught this Pokemon. The Rafflesia arnoldi, also known as the corpse lily to some, is one unique flower. It is native to a specific area of Indonesia and is known for being one of the largest flowers in the world. On top of its massive size, this flower is known for producing a disgusting smell, similar to that of rotting flesh. That's where it got its name. If you check underneath this flower, you may just find vile plume hiding underneath. Don't you see how the top of its head looks just like this flower? This just reminds me of another Pokemon disguised as a plant. Take a look at this pitcher plant. Does it look familiar? Look at it now. I'm sure you see the resemblance. This upside down pitcher plant with a huge mouth on top may look strange, but knowing that it is Victory Bell hiding in our world makes me want to catch this Pokemon. Too bad it may catch me before I do that. You see, pitcher plants are carnivorous plants that are native to various parts of the U.S. They have a long, open area that is filled with a substance that helps them to feed on any prey that falls into its mouth. Another creature that would devour anything that fell into its long mouth is the Gorile. Or should I say the Pokemon Crocodile? Crocodile has been known as the bully of the sands. It uses the sandy terrain as cover to patiently wait for prey to pass just by like the Gorile, who utilizes their specialized snouts to detect water vibrations, allowing them to swiftly snatch fish as they pass by. I just hope it doesn't snatch poor Magikarp in the process. This Pokemon just lacks strength, but when it evolves into Gyaridos, sheesh! As I was saying, Gariol better not eat this Pokemon in real life because it is an endangered species, the Yellow Eye Rockfish. What's even more fascinating is that the Yellow Eye Rockfish, even though endangered, can live to be over 100 years old. Unlike Magikarp, I don't think the Pokemon Psyduck can live up to a century because of its erratic behavior. As it turns out, Psyduck's behavior and name is all a plot to mislead you from figuring out what it really is in real life. You see, the Pokemon isn't actually a duck, nor was it inspired by one. It was modeled after platypuses, which are nearly as enigmatic as Psyduck itself. Like Psyduck, they spend most of their time in or around water, though they're notably less prone to debilitating headaches. Unlike Psyduck, Sandshrew doesn't cause headaches, but that has not stopped it from being hunted down and trafficked in real life. Let me take you back to 2017, when a six-week-old Sunda Pangolin was rescued by the Singapore Zoo and nicknamed it Sandshrew because of how it resembled the Pokemon. The real-life Sandshrew was safely returned to the wild in 2018 and was tracked as part of the Pangolin conservation efforts. Sunda Pangolins are among the most trafficked mammals on Earth. Killed for their meat and scales, the International Union of Conservation of Nature, IUCN, lists the species as critically endangered with an extremely high risk of extinction. Damn, they better not let Sandshrew go extinct. Same goes for Jupiter. No way, a Pokemon that resembles a spider with a water bubble over its head? This can't possibly exist in real life. That's what I thought, until I heard of the Diving Bell Spider. Diving Bell Spiders live primarily underwater, gathering air into a bubble around its abdomen to breathe and provide an air supply to its nest. Unlike Jupiter, they spend most all their lives underwater. And unlike Jupiter, Finnekin is very cute. The adorable fire-type Pokemon's name is a dead giveaway to its real-life version, the Phoenix Fox. Just as adorable as their Pokemon counterparts, Phoenix Foxes are native to the Sahara Desert, which undoubtedly inspired Finnekin's fire-based abilities. Both creatures have large ears, which also loosely share a similar function. Phoenix Foxes use their ears to keep cool in the desert, and Finnekins use theirs to vent hot air. Speaking of Pokemon that are obviously among us, Caterpie is just, isn't that a caterpillar? Yup, Caterpie is a caterpillar, but not just any caterpillar. It is strikingly similar to the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail caterpillar. It has the same green body, black and yellow eyes, and the same long piece sticking off of the front of its head. This caterpillar can even employ a defense strategy with false eyes, using them to create the illusion of a larger size, thereby deterring potential aggressive threats. Aggressive threats like the Mankey, a quite short-tempered Pokemon. With its odd round body and pig snout, Mankey is obviously a monkey in disguise. But just like Caterpie, it's not just any monkey. It is the Barbary macaque, an agile climber and a social animal living in large colonies and treetops. Quick question, what do you get when you crossbreed a raccoon and a zigzag? This guy! A zigzagoon is just a raccoon dog in real life! Mm-hmm. This charming character is based on a similarly sweet-looking species of canid, the Japanese raccoon dog, found only in Japan. They are close 
closely related to the common raccoon dog and more distantly related to foxes. In Japanese folklore, raccoon dogs, or tanuki, hold a significant place. They appear in tales as mischievous tricksters, capable of shape-shifting effortlessly to take on human forms. This just made Zigzagoon creepy to me, but I still find Zubat creepier. I mean, just take a look at its real-life version. This is the Cuban greater funnel-eared bat, and it can only be found in one particular cave in westernmost Cuba. I also find Zubat creepy because it also resembles a vampire bat. You know what Pokemon I don't find creepy? Rhydon. It's big and scary, but it's not that creepy when you get to know it in real life. Its horn, bipedal gait, and thick tail would make you think that it's a combination of a rhinoceros and some kind of dinosaur. But would it shock you to know that Rhydon is a carbon copy of one species of rhino in particular? The Javan rhinoceros? Like Rhydon, this rhino only has one horn and thick armor-like skin. It is also one of the most endangered species of animal in the world, with less than 100 of its kind left. This next Pokemon is not even an animal in real life, but a myth. I'm talking about Drowsy, which is based on the Japanese myth of the Baku. Oh, the Baku are creatures who eat bad dreams of sleeping people. Anywho, what I may have left out is that the Baku was created by the spare pieces that were left over when the gods finished creating all the other animals. No wonder Drowsy shares some traits with tapers and elephants. Its jewel coloring makes it especially similar to the Malayan taper. Another Pokemon who you might have seen before in real life is the Poliwag, who is literally any tadpole you come across. See, Poliwag's most prominent feature is this huge swirl on its stomach. Would it shock you to know that it is not just any random design? In real life, tadpoles have intestines that swirl and can be observed since their bellies are see-through. Listen, prominent features are not all that is used to figure out what Pokemon lives among us. Sometimes you just gotta observe what they do, as is the case with the Rimmeraid, who is remarkably similar to the Archerfish. Archerfish are a group of freshwater fish that shoot water at prey using their remarkably good aim to hit their targets from up to seven feet away. Rimmeraid uses a similar strategy to hunt its prey. However, unlike the Archerfish, Rimmeraid is capable of hitting its target from 300 feet away. Some Pokemon are just terrible at hiding in the real world. We even get to see some every passing day, just like Butterfree. Indeed, the name Butterfree is a clever fusion of free and butterfly. Even though the size of the Pokemon is bigger, there's no mistaking that this Pokemon is a butterfly. There is also no mistaking that Jugong is Dugong, aka Sea Cow. Not only do they look alike, their names are practically the same. The story behind this real life Pokemon is quite sad because researchers found that Dugong is going extinct. Matter of fact, it is functionally extinct in China, with no sightings recorded since 2008. Not even in clean waters. But you can find the Pokemon Louvre Disc in the clear ocean waters of the Pokemon world. Even though this Pokemon looks completely unique and nothing like a lot of the real world fish that we see all the time, it was actually inspired by the Kissing Gourami. The Kissing Gourami is a fish with a similarly pale pink color that is known for having a puckered up mouth. Huh, I see where it got its name. Did you know that the legendary Pokemon Terrakion has an animal doppelganger? Yep, none other than the Takin, a powerfully built mammal that looks similar to a musk ox, but is more closely related to a wild sheep. If you are interested in catching them all, you can find Takins roaming the eastern Himalayas of Bhutan, China, Tibet, India, and Myanmar, up to 13,000 feet above sea level. But beware, they have powerfully built quadrupeds and weigh almost a ton. You might want to be very careful, and if you want to play it safe, you can actually go after Rattata in real life because it is not as heavy as Takin. But it is even rarer than Takin because this can only be found in Chile. That's right, in real life, Ratata is a Bennett's chinchilla rat, a species of chinchilla rat that can only be found in Chile, where its habitat is Mediterranean-type scrub on the western side of the Andes. I have told you about real-life Pokemon that are fishes, birds, plants, bats, corals, and even a trash bag. But what about a monster? A Pokemon that doesn't exist as an animal or myth in our world, but as a monster. I'm talking about the Pokemon Mawile, the reincarnation of the Japanese monster known as Utakuchiona. We are talking about a monster that has two mouths, a normal one located on her face and its second one on the back of the head beneath the hair, just like Mawile. In Japanese mythology, this is a woman who has been too strict about what she eats. This intense restriction on the food she consumes causes another mouth to grow on the back of her head. This is outright creepy. Dear trainers, make sure to be careful out there while Pokemon catching, and make sure you check out my other video where I go over 40 Easter eggs that are literally illegal to know. See you there!